Video 6 of Chapter 7, where we are nearing the end of our discussion on sampling distributions. Now, previously, we had looked at the average ages of marathon runners from the Lincoln, Nebraska National Guard Marathon in 2006. And so the shape of this distribution was skewed right with a mean of 38.81 and a standard deviation of 11.74. So let's talk about a problem. What if I am 41 years old? And what is the probability that I would randomly select a runner that ran this race that is as old or older than myself? Well, let's say that random runner's age, we'll use the random variable x to say what is the probability that that random runner's age is old or as old, no, I'm not 20 anymore, 41 years old. Now, our hope is that we could use normal CDF to be able to calculate this probability. But we run into a problem here because the population does not follow a normal distribution. It follows more of a skewed right distribution. And so we immediately run into this problem of we cannot calculate this probability because we're not allowed to use normal CDF. And this isn't a sampling distribution problem because the sample size is one. So this isn't based on an average age but this is just based on the fact of one runner, and this is going to have to come from the population distribution, which is not an approximately normal shape. So what is the probability? I, I just can't answer it because we cannot use normal CDF. So let's take a look at some situations in which we have a population that is not approximately normal, and then we're going to need to explore uh, sample sizes what sample size am I going to need, uh, if any, really to be able to accomplish an approximately normal shape? Because we've seen previously that when we have sampling distributions, the shape became more and more approximately normal. Uh, but was there a certain sample size that would allow us to achieve, uh, to guarantee that we would have a sampling distribution that is approximately normal? So that's what we're going to take a look at next. So I'm going to use a different applet than I had used in the previous video because uh, this one will allow me to control the sample size a little better. So the top distribution that we have up here, this is the population distribution, and I have a very strongly skewed right distribution to start with. Now I'm going to start with a small sample size, the smallest sample size I can take really to create a sampling distribution, and that would be a sample of size 2. So I'm going to take one random sample of size 2, boom, boom, and then there is the sample mean from those two. And you can see, if it's just based on a sample size of two, the mean would be the value really right in the middle. And you can see that lines up perfectly here. Okay, so there's one data point, one sample mean in the creation of our sampling distribution. So I could do this one more time, and one more time, and one more time. So let's see, let's get up to five here. So just having five sample means, it's not really giving us a great picture. So if I were to do it five more times, so now it's going to do the five process until I get up to 10 sample means. And again, it, it's really rough trying to see something, see a sampling distribution shape center spread just based on 10 samples. So I'm going to ratchet this up a lot and go for a thousand random samples, each of size two, and it's going to plot the sample means of those thousand random samples down here in the bottom. And then you can see we're starting to get a good idea of what the shape is, but is the shape approximately normal? Once I get to, there's 10,000, or yeah, 10,010 random samples of size two. And we can see the shape of this distribution clearly is not approximately normal, but is rather skewed right. Now, what I want you to notice is, based on the population shape, this sampling distribution is not as strongly skewed right as the population shape. So we can still hopefully agree here that the sampling distribution is becoming more approximately normal. It's just not there yet to be fully approximately normal. So now what I'll do is let's increase now our sample size. Let's go to sample size of 10, let's say. And I'm automatically going to start off with a thousand random samples of size 10. And you can see, ooh, look at that sampling distribution after, let's get up to 20,000 random samples. How does that sampling distribution look? Does that look approximately normal to you? 
And initially, if you just look at that and glance at it, you might go, yeah, that looks approximately normal. Cool. But there is a little skewness to this. It is not perfectly symmetric. And you might be like, yeah, but it's close enough. And I would say, maybe, maybe this is close enough. But 10 maybe just isn't good enough. So how big of a sample size would we really need to get that really good, perfect looking, approximately normal distribution? And so the common statistical rule of thumb, and some textbooks vary on this number here. Some textbooks will say 25 is high enough, and some textbooks will say 30 is good enough. And so we're going to be more conservative with our estimate. And we're always going to go with, if a sample size is at least 30, regardless of whatever shape the population starts off to be, the sampling distribution will always end up being an approximately normal distribution. And that has a particular name to it, which I will share with you here shortly. But I also want to show, let's try to make some, let's try to make a crazy looking distribution here. So a custom, Ooh, let's do a custom. Is this the one where I can go up and down? Oh yeah. Look at this. Let's say we have a distribution that looks like this, like it is just crazy up and down. So if I had a sample of size, let's say I get up to that 30 and I do it a thousand times and another thousand and let's get up to 10,000 here. Look at that sampling distribution. I mean, it really doesn't have much skewness to it. You can tell it's just about symmetric. Again, it's not perfect, perfect, but it is darn near perfect. Uh, what would be, in my opinion, kind of the opposite of a normal distribution? Um, I would have to say something that looks basically like an inverted uh, approximately normal shape. So what if I started off great big? Oh, there we go. let's try this again. If it starts off with a fat tail, comes down in the middle to nothing, and then goes up like that. So it's kind of like I took a normal distribution, split it in half, and then put the two ends on the opposite sides here. So if I did a random sample of size 15, what does that look like? And you can start to see that looks pretty good, approximately normal. If I change it to sample size of 30 instead, and I did, there's 10,000 random samples, that's looking great as well. So that 30 will pretty much guarantee us every single time. Now, Depending on what the initial population shape is, if the initial population is maybe just slightly skewed left or slightly skewed right, um, it may only take a sample size of 10 in order to get that sampling distribution to be approximately normal. But regardless of what the population shape is, if it's something crazy looking or something almost approximately normal, every time if we have a sample size of 30 or more, the sampling distribution is guaranteed to be approximately normal. Now, I mentioned earlier that the fact that a population distribution, regardless of its shape, will turn into an approximately normal sampling distribution because the sample size is large enough, and we said that's around 30 or more, the special name of that is the central limit theorem. So if we wanted to talk about the shape, the center, and the spread of a sampling distribution for a sample mean, and specifically when the population is not normal or it's just not given to you what that shape is. Again, the sampling distribution will be approximately normal if we have a large enough sample size. And again, just think in the back of your mind, we're looking for something 30 or larger. You don't have to mention the 30 sample size. You just have to say that the sample size is large enough. Because again, some textbooks will say 25 is big enough. Some textbooks will say 30 is big enough. Ours specifically says 30. But the reason why this all works is because of the central limit theorem. And you may abbreviate the central limit theorem it is okay on the AP exam to abbreviate it as the CLT. Now, this is again, it's kind of, I could have showed you this earlier in the applet, but if the population is normal, if the population is uniform, if it's flat, if it's skewed, if it's bimodal or just kind of randomish looking, if I start off with a random sample of size 10, then here's what the sampling distributions would look like based off those respective population distributions. But once I get up to a sample size of 30, 
regardless of what the population shape started off to be, the sampling distributions all end up being beautiful, wonderful, approximately normal shapes. Now, a word of warning, the central limit theorem only works with sampling distributions of sample means. Sampling distributions for sample proportions will always use the rule that we had used previously is n times p and n times 1 minus p both greater than or equal to 10. So if you have a sampling distribution problem and it's a proportion problem and they say you took a random sample of size 100, you cannot claim to use the central limit theorem to justify that that sampling distribution is approximately normal. So this is definitely one of the most common things that students will mess up on is they want to try to use the central limit theorem for a sampling distribution problem for proportions. This only works for mean problems. Now the center of a sampling distribution of sample means this is the same exact formula that we had used previously in the last video when the population distribution started off being approximately normal. So the mean of all of our sample means is going to be roughly the same as the population mean. And again, this is all because the sample mean x bar can be can reasonably estimate the population mean mu because of the fact that it is an unbiased estimator, right? The mean of all the sample means, the center of our sampling distribution is roughly the same as the population parameter. And the spread for the standard deviation, it uses the same exact formula as before. So really the only difference between this video and the previous video was all about the population shape. If the population shape is normal, who cares what sample size we're going to take for our sampling distribution? We can take it with a sample size of 2, a sample size of 10, a sample size of 100. It doesn't matter. But if the population shape is not normal or it is unknown, we don't know what the shape is, we're going to need at least a sample size of 30 for the central limit theorem to guarantee our sampling distribution will be approximately normal. The center and the spread exactly the same as they were before. So now, I am 41 years old. What is the probability that we would randomly select 30 runners with a mean age as old or older than myself? Now remember, we couldn't answer this question when it was just based on one runner because the population shape was not normal and I couldn't use normal CDF. But now this has turned into a sampling distribution problem because we have a sample size of 30 runners and we're looking at the mean age of those 30 runners. So what is the probability that we would find a mean age as old or older than myself at 41 years old? Now, I'm going to need to be able to verify what is the shape, the center, and the spread before I really calculate this probability. So let's re-put that here. X bar greater than or equal to 40. One. So the shape, ooh, the shape, well, the population distribution was not normal, if you remember. Oh, but wait, now we have a large enough sample size. So the shape will be approximately normal with our large n, with our large sample size, thanks to the CLT. So as long as you mention three pieces of information to verify that the shape is approximately normal. Number one, you have to claim that it's approximately normal. Why is it approximately normal? We're going to use the CLT, but what did the CLT need in order to prove that the shape was going to be approximately normal? It needed a large sample size. So again, you don't have to mention the fact that it's 30 or that it's 30 or larger. Just saying you have a large enough sample size is good enough. Now the center, mu sub x bar is equal to mu, and what was the population mean? It was 38.81 years old. And the standard deviation, sigma sub x bar is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. The population standard deviation was 11.74, and we need to divide that by the square root of 30 for our sample size. So let's figure out what that is. I'm going to do that on my calculator here in my hand. 11.74 divided by the square root of 30 gives me approximately 2.143 years old. 
Now, there was a condition tied onto this. Is the population greater than or equal to 10 times the sample size? Well, who's the population? All runners that ran this specific race. And remember, how many was that? That was 974. Is that greater than or equal to 10 times my sample size of 30? That would be 300. So is 974 greater than 300? Absolutely. There is no assuming that this is true. So now we are allowed to use normal CDF to calculate this probability. Now, before I get into the lower bound and upper bound, I always like to see a nice picture of what's really happening here. So we know the sampling distribution will be approximately normal. And we know the center, mu sub x bar, is the same as the population mean, 38.81. And then i got to find where am I at in this distribution. So 41 is, oh, what? Just about one standard deviation above the mean here. So if I go about one standard deviation above here, that line is where I would find an average age of 41. And which way do I want a shade of 41? I wanted to go as old or older. So I want that right tail. So looking at my picture, I know the lower bound is going to be 41 years old. The upper bound is going to be infinity. The mean is 38.81. And the standard deviation is 2.143. So again, I always like to label. Even though I've got a nice picture that's fully labeled, we can go ahead and label this as our lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. So now let's plug that into our calculator here. Normal CDF, 41, 9999, 38.81, and 2.143. And that gives us a probability of approximately 0.1534. Four. So a little over 15% chance. I'm going to randomly select 30 runners that have a mean age as old or older than myself. Now, I've got a you-do problem here for you, split up into two parts. The Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, announced that weights of passengers are not normally distributed with a mean of 190 pounds and a standard deviation of 35 pounds. So for the first part, I want you to describe the sampling distribution of the sample mean weight based on a random sample of 10 passengers. Mm. What's the shape, center, and spread of the sampling distribution based on a random sample of 10 passengers? And then for part B, I want you to explain why we cannot calculate the probability that the mean weight of 10 passengers exceeds 200 pounds. And we will discuss these two problems the next day in class.